By the mid-16th century, Spain was the first empire on which the sun never set, enriched by the conquest of the Americas. There's this huge increase in the gold imports into Spain, and you see there the huge quantity of gold that, that actually was being melted down, because this was not because of gold mines, this was absolutely melted treasure. But that wasn't enough. They also then had to enslave the indigenous people and put them to work in the mines, producing even more gold, which could then again be shipped back to Europe and used as money to finance uh, Spain's domination of the world. Spain became very prosperous. No, this is the moment in, in which all the literature developed, is the moment when the, the arts, Baroque starts uh, uh, during that uh, period uh, is a, a period of prosperity which is very important for, for culture. In 1556, Emperor Charles V turned over the Spanish throne to his son, Philip II, a devout Catholic who dedicated his life to eliminating Protestantism from Europe. To fund his objectives, Philip used the vast wealth of gold coming from the Americas. But on the open seas, the gold-laden ships were vulnerable, particularly to Philip's most formidable enemy, England, and her most famous privateer, Francis Drake. You've got these very aggressive pirates, plunderers, that might call themselves explorers as well. What were they in pursuit of? Essentially, they were in pursuit of Spanish ships with gold and silver on them. These people started out as brigands, as pirates, if you like, people like Drake, um, who would simply take over Spanish ships that they met on the oceans, um, plunder them for any treasure that was there, uh, and either turn the Spanish sailors uh, into slaves on their own ships or kill them. Throughout the 1570s, Drake attacked Spanish galleons at sea and Spanish settlements in the New World stealing a fortune of Philip's new gold. His exploits rained terror upon Spanish sailors, earning him the nickname El Drake, the Dragon. Drake was the most successful privateer of his time and a close friend of the Queen. Elizabeth herself sponsored his most profitable voyage in 1577, a three-year journey west during which he boldly attacked and plundered Spanish ships and Spanish settlements. The trip also resulted in the first circumnavigation of the world by an Englishman. When he returned in 1580, he bestowed upon his queen Spanish gold worth over half a million English pounds. In Spain, Philip demanded Drake's head. In England, Queen Elizabeth knighted him. An infuriated Philip from his mountaintop retreat called the Escorial, plotted his revenge on Elizabeth and England. The Escorial was part palace, part monastery, built by Philip in 1563, and paid for with gold taken from the Americas. Philip used his vast wealth for the glory of Spain, not himself. From breakfast to bedtime, Philip toiled like a common bureaucrat. He personally read reports from his mints and accounts from his gold mines. Pious to the point of austerity, he dressed like a common monk. Visitors mistook him for one of his own servants. In the hallways and chapels of the Escorial, Philip pondered and prayed for a solution to his two biggest problems, English pirates and English Protestants. In those times, all the answers related to religion probably more than anything else. This was the ideological driving force and the Spaniards in particular were passionate about their Catholicism. 